and and bisect all of the lines that we made that we transferred from that rubber band. And what that'll allow us to do is to position all of the holes in one line so it looks neater. And actually, you don't have to, particularly with the longer uh, pipes. Um, there's some thought as to um, offsetting the positions of the holes for a more ergonomic um, pipe. Um, we're not doing that on this because it adds an extra level of complication that we don't want to deal with right now. So what we'll do, so after you have marked all of those um, holes and the centers, is you will score them. The cent you'll score right across the center of that hole with, a, with the um, hacksaw. And you just want enough to just scratch the, the, uh, the copper so that when you go to punch the hole with the center punch, that uh, the center punch doesn't slide around. Um, it also weakens the copper slightly so that the center punch has less copper to go through, but it, not significantly. So what you'll do is then you'll put this in a vise, um, and you'll use the center punch over each of the holes, and you'll punch out the center of each of these holes. Okay? And then what you'll do is you will proceed to use progressively larger and larger drill bits um, to bore out these holes. Now I used a single um, 5 16 inch spade bit to do this. And then after the hole was at the appropriate size, um, I used the reamer. The, this is really a countersink bit, half inch countersink. I used the reamer to uh, finish the holes off so that they would be uh, not sharp on the fingers. Um, now, while you're doing this, you want to make sure that your mouthpiece uh, had a good tone from the first segment of this. Um, if your mouthpiece was making that whistling sound, then when you put it onto the pipe, uh, you will you will hear a musical note. Uh, now, with the pipe cut to this particular length, you will get a B flat note. Um, the shorter the pipe, the higher pitched the note. Um, you could potentially go all the way up to G, um, which is the highest um, tin whistle I've ever seen available. Um, but the this particular mouthpiece design um, probably won't accommodate more much variation in the length of pipes um, more than the three that I've made because there's variations in window size that you have to take into account and the, the edge of the, the size of the lip and the size of the the wind the windway and it, it, it gets a little complicated but for the for the moment we're making a B flat whistle so let's stick to that Okay, so with the, with the lines that you drew on the pipe on top of that masking tape as a guide, um, you want to use progressively larger and larger drill bits until you have reached that size hole. Now at that point, um, you'll want to fine tune this. If you have a chromatic tuner, great. Um, I used GarageBand, Apple GarageBand, um, and a MIDI instrument, which could produce a pure tone to, to tune. Um, the sizes that I gave you, actually you may want to cut the holes a little bit smaller to start with. Uh, the smaller the hole, the more flat the note is gonna be. Uh, you can sharpen the note by increasing the diameter of the hole. Obviously you can sharpen the note as much as you want, but once it's too sharp, you can't really go back because you can't make the hole smaller. So you want to be careful there. Um, start with the top note, okay, and just bore that out to the right size and see if you get um, a pure note. By overblowing, um, with all of the holes covered, you'll hear the octave note, which is So at that point, what you can do is um, you can cover the first hole and see if you get a, um, actually, you can uncover all the holes 
And if, you, if the first hole is drilled to the right size, you'll hear the next step down, which is Then you proceed to the next hole and make that the appropriate size. And so on. Until you have a chroma, until you have a uh, B flat major scale. And at that point, then you can do decorative uh, touches to the pipe. You can uh, sand it as I did and put a coat of um, clear gloss on it. And uh, as long as you don't interfere with the wind way on the mouthpiece, you can pretty much do whatever you want to this. I suggest after you've bored the holes, you take a file like this one, this nice rounded file, and you go inside like this and you file off all of the uh, flashing that has been pushed down into the hole as a result of drilling. Uh, you want this wind way to be as clear of obstructions as possible. As you can see, it's pretty clean in there. Um, the final step, once you have a good sounding note, uh, what I did was I took super glue, uh, just simple cyanoacrylate, and I uh, went over all of the exposed wood surfaces on the wood plug, which is forming the windway in my mouthpiece, um, and that just seals them to prevent the uh, wood from absorbing moisture. Now, if you're going to do that, you need to be very careful about the about getting it in the in the wind channel that we that we uh, bored or chiseled out, um, so that you don't change the profile of that at all. Um, if the profile of that windway is too narrow you your note is going to be thin and uh and tinny and if it's too uh large it's going to be uh airy and uh could be ethereal um if it if it's just right but you you, you want it to be just about the right size and that just takes some tweaking um and that is it then for the creation of a copper tin whistle so thanks for watching.